What's up guys, welcome back to Fancy Goldfish Fanatics. Today we're gonna to be looking at how to cut costs and how to save electricity when running your fish tanks. So make sure you stay tuned to find out more. Hey Fanatics family, welcome back. As always, check out those links in the description and make sure to check out our sponsors, Star Fisheries and Jimmy Goldfish USA. Today, as I mentioned, this is part two of our two-part electricity series, which is hopefully quite on topic with the current increase price cap on electricity. In the first episode, I spoke about how much it costs for me to run all of my fish tanks and how much electricity it actually uses. And I believe we worked out it was around 35 pounds without any heaters and around 50 to 60, even 70 pounds in winter to run all of the tanks if I'm using heaters as well. So in this video, we're gonna work out how we can cut those costs, how we can reduce and slash those prices to make sure this goldfish keeping and fish keeping hobby is so much more affordable and possible for us to continue with in the future, especially if we get more energy increases and price increases as well. There are many different things we can do. So a few things we can do to start off with is look at the lighting above our tanks. Lighting uses a lot of electricity. I would say behind heating costs, the lighting cost is probably one of the top costs, especially on a larger system. A few things you can look at for lighting is move to an LED fixture. Now, a lot of people will use the old T5, T8 fluorescent tubes, fluorescent bulbs and halogen bulbs as well. And these are power hungry units. They use so much power and they also give a lot of secondary heat off of the units as well, which does heat your tank, which is quite good, but that is so uneconomical and it's so much worse to heat your tank from a light fixture rather than using a more an economical heating device or heating technique. So that is one thing we can do. We can move away from the halogen bulbs and the fluorescent bulbs. Not only are we gonna reduce the power, but we're gonna help the environment as well. So it is a win-win situation. Also, you will not have to be focused on changing bulbs every year or changing them if the spectrum is dipping or not at the correct spectrum that it should be. So that is another thing to look at. And LEDs are flooding the markets right now. As you will notice on the Ryukin tank, if you've seen it, I have an LED floodlight fixture, which is super cheap, only 4.99 for a five watt fixture. And you can go up from there, basically, you can use larger fixtures, you can, they're really cheap and really affordable. I do have the Hydro 26 HD, which is an expensive LED fixture. I believe it was around 300, 325 quid just for the one light, but it has lasted me many years, many different tanks, and it's fully adjustable and I absolutely love it. It is a great tank to have over the monster fish tank and it does a really good job I can change the wattage so it goes all the way up to 90 watts, but I don't need it that bright. So I bring it down to 40 watts, which saves quite a lot of electricity and quite a lot of money as well. So now we've covered lights, a few other things we can look at is heating. Now, a lot of you will heat your fancy goldfish and a lot of you will also not heat your fancy goldfish. Generally, if you're heating your fancy goldfish in summer, the temperature is quite warm anyway. You might have a room temperature between 24, 26 degrees. So that heater is not really using much power at all. What you can do to mitigate the heater being on in summer is turn it down slightly. So generally, if your room is around 24 to 25 degrees, I would turn that heater down to sort of 23, 23 and a half degrees. So that heater is not really coming on at all. It is also keeping a stable temperature in case you get a cold night and the room temperature drops below that level, that then the heat will kick in and it will also keep that temperature at a nice stable level because temperature stability is far more important than chasing a specific temperature or a really warm temperature for example. 
So we can turn those heaters down slightly in summer and use our room temperature, the sun, the weather to heat our tanks efficiently. In winter, what you can also do is you can turn your heater down for I would say maybe November, December, January, maybe February as well. Just for those four months, turn that heater down a little bit so your fish are kept nice and warm still, their metabolism is kept in check, especially for those Thai and Chinese fish that you want to keep slightly warmer as I've found. Then turn that temperature down slightly, maybe bring them down to 22, 21 degrees just to save a few pounds over the winter because that will definitely save some money as well. What you can do if you've got a really large tank or quite a few multiple tanks in your room is try and regulate the room temperature. Use gas, use your gas radiators if you've got them because gas is far cheaper than electricity at the moment. So it's far better you to use gas to potentially heat the room to keep that temperature nice and stable rather than using electronic heaters or electronic radiators, for example. So there's another way we can reduce that heating cost. Also, another way to reduce the heating cost from our in indoor electric aquarium heaters is to use insulation. Now, not only insulating underneath the tank with large polystyrene boards, but also what you can do is you can pack out your stands potentially with cushions, blankets, things like that. So when the water is entering your canister filter or potentially your sump, there's a lot of insulation keeping it nice and warm so we're not getting as much heat loss. You must make sure you have enough ventilation around your sump and your canister filter so they do not overheat. But in winter, this is really not too much of a problem. Another potential mitigation technique for this is using a cover, using a polycarbonate cover. I have acrylic covers on the top of this tank, but polycarbonate definitely holds the heat in more efficiently and it definitely insulates the tank better. So I do have a polycarbonate cover on the Ryukin tank because it does maintain that temperature. It does keep it more stable as I do not run a heater on that tank and I don't want that temperature to be fluctuating all day long. So that is another technique we can use. We can also opt for slightly more efficient canister filters, potentially spending that bit of extra money for efficient pumps and canister filters can go a long way in the future. Generally, those costs mitigate themselves after a couple of years. And if you're keeping a canister filter for maybe five or 10 years, if you really keep up with the maintenance and make sure it's kept working in tip top condition, then those costs definitely add up and using a cheaper canister efficiency will definitely help for instance i believe the eheim canister filter is the same power as my all pond solutions filter but the eheim is around 25 watts and that all pond solutions one is around 55 watts so i would say over the year that that all pond solutions could be using maybe 50 pounds more in electricity and 50 pounds over half a decade or a decade really does add up so there's definitely something to think about also with the air pumps you can get those piston air pumps which are really powerful but use quite a lot of electricity and there are many really quiet nice and gentle air pumps like the eheim range which use really low power and are really good for energy consumption so definitely something to look at as well when you're buying your equipment definitely pay more attention to the wattage i always pay attention to the wattage because no matter if a canister filter or a pump is far cheaper sometimes those costs really do equal out quite quickly so it's definitely something to consider as well another thing to consider is when you're doing your water changes a lot of people will put cold tap water or cold water into their tank and let that heater bring that temperature back up. If you've got a gas boiler like me, what you can do is you can add slightly warmer water to the tank so you're mitigating that heater, pushing that temperature back up and really using a lot more energy because as I mentioned previously, gas is far cheaper than electricity at the moment. So that is definitely something i would consider doing as well another slightly more extreme method of keeping the heat in is to potentially wrap your tank in blankets and polystyrene now this is quite an extreme method but potentially it could be good to use some polystyrene or insulation at the back of your tank to keep a bit more heat in it's not going to save that much money but over the course of the winter or over the course of the year it might help save a few pounds this is also a really good technique to use if you've got a power car not only does the insulation help keep that tank nice and warm? It stops those temperature fluctuations, especially in winter. And not only in power cuts is it good to wrap your 
heated or tropical tanks in blankets and insulation, but it's also good to have a battery backup as well, because in a power cut, this can really make a huge difference. And it doesn't matter if we're saving electricity, if we haven't got any fish to look after. So definitely something to consider is using a battery backup. And I do actually have a battery backup on this system that runs the wave maker, making sure there is oxygen and circulation to keep the beneficial bacteria in the sand bed alive and provide enough oxygen for the fish as well. But I will cover battery backups and electricity outages in another episode potentially, if that's something you guys want to see. So if you guys have got any more electricity electricity saving and money saving tips for keeping your aquariums then please leave them down in that comment section below it's definitely going to help me and it's definitely going to help everyone else watching i hope you've enjoyed this episode maybe a little bit boring like the previous episode on electricity but i thought it was quite important especially with the rising costs and a lot of us really love our fish we don't want to get rid of our fish even though the electricity is really starting to mount up. It is really good hobby. I absolutely love it, as you can probably tell from the channel. So I hope it's maybe helped one or two of you out at home. As always, thank you all for watching. If you want your tanks to be featured on the channel, drop me an email down below, fancygoldfishfanatics at gmail.com. Remember to keep those water changes up and happy fish keeping. <laughs>